This is Richard with BWE Firearms, and today we are looking at the 1919 A4, I believe it is, uh, belt-fed machine gun. It's a U.S.-made machine gun by uh, Browning Design. And this gun started out as the 1917 water-cooled and then became the 1919 A4 uh, air-cooled. It is a recoil operated belt fed machine gun. It has a booster up here, which helps with the recoil. And it is originally 30 out six. This one is a uh, made from an Israeli parts kit. It is not semi auto, it is full auto. Um, but it's made from an Israeli parts kit and is in 308. So, where do we want to start here? Let's start with loading, I guess. With the 1919, it's set up on links. And when it loads, it pulls the round back, drops it down, and then pushes it into the chamber. Yeah, one of those rounds landed on my leg when it was firing. Yes. And they are hot because it ejects out the bottom. Amen. You open the top cover. Place the rounds in there like that. Push the extractor down. Close the top cover. Cock it once. And you're ready to go. The other way to load it is push it through to there with the starter tab or you don't even need the starter tab you can push it through here through the opening in this side cock it twice and it's ready to go so that's how you load the gun now let me take these rounds out because they are live rounds and I sure as hell don't want to load it here. Singles. Get the paper there if you want. That is cool. You've got the tripod, the elevation adjustment, they call it a T and E, trans transverse and elevation. First, to cock the bolt back, and there's a hole back here with a spring loaded plunger. There we go. There we go. And it's for the recoil spring. And you push it in, you push the bolt back, push the plunger in, turn it, and it locks in place. Now, doesn't feel like it, but that's not under spring tension. This is the trigger for this with the spade grips, and you need to take off this trigger actuator. So there's the pin here that you take off, and then that just comes off. Now, I'm going to do what I can to hold this okay hang on it's it's catching on the buffer on the latch so there we go so the spade grip is off now most of these guns in world war ii when they were supplied to the troops they had the pistol grip here and these guns are kind of weird because the trigger does not pull back like normal guns. It pulls up. So it's kind of weird shooting them. But that's that. Now, now that we have that done, we pull the bolt back to where the bolt handle lines up with the hole. Pull that out. 
and we can pull the bolt back. Here is that spring-loaded plunger with the recoil spring. I advise don't mess with this because that spring's about four feet long and it will shoot across your neighborhood. Uh, here is your extractor that just flips up and comes out. Now, you take your bolt handle. Nope, this one doesn't have it. Okay. So you take what you, whatever you've got and stick it in this hole and release this little plunger here. And then this whole assembly will slide out. There we go. Now, this assembly, these two little legs right there, are the accelerator. And their job is when the bolt is coming back, they get in these and they push the bolt for uh, they push the bolt backwards so it's because this is moving backwards during recoil along with the whole assembly so the accelerator makes the bolt move faster so that's what that job is now to set your headspace take your bolt make sure your extractor is out of it line up the grooves close that this is your locking bolt and it locks into this groove in the gun so you want it all the way locked so this is this is actually upside down but you want this all the way towards the bolt now this spring You can pull that spring out a little bit and cheat. And you want to turn your barrel in. So this is all locked. And you turn your barrel in just till it hits the face of the bolt. Now, most people say once you do that, that's zero headspace. And most people say, once you get zero headspace, you push the spring in or you wait. I should have waited because it's, I didn't think it was lined up. So you back the barrel out one, one notch. Make sure that spring is back in there. And this barrel is now head spaced to this bolt in this carrier. If you change one of them, any one of them, you have to re head space. So that's head spacing. And now we can start to put this thing back together. Okay, that goes like this. The accelerator goes like that. This pin here goes in here and pushes on this spring in that little hole or that notch. Come on, accelerator, behave yourself. Now, if you're not careful, this thing will pop out. But you take that and you can see here where that mating surface with the booster. So you feed that into the hole. You try not to let this fly into pieces. There you go. We're gonna, I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna set this in place. Yeah, so it doesn't launch. Yes, and then we'll slide the bolt in. So I push that little, Who's it's in? Yes. 
Okay, that's locked in place. Now, now I want to put the extractor back in the bolt. Yes, put it in the correct way. And I gotta lift the. Well, I need to put the bolt handle in, is what I need yeah. to do. Um, so I need to slide this back. Where's the hole? There it is. And it, it goes in the front hole. Ah! Did you try to catch yourself? No. It tried to, but it didn't. Okay. So that's all on. Now. And the spring is so tight in these. Get my screwdriver on there. Here it is. You know, I've got the hammer. And I don't think we really need it to put this back on. Right. There we go. There, there we go. Okay, so that's on. This is on. Uh, Our that trigger part. actuator. Yeah, we just need to put that on. Ugh. And you just line everything up and push this pin through. Now we're all set. This is a closed bolt gun. Ah, we're not all set. Oh. I forgot to un I forgot to release the recoil spring. Oh, so we pull the bolt back. There we go. There. Now it should. There we go. Okay, now for feeding. This little spring-loaded guy here lets the rounds go in, but the round catches here and it will not let the belt slip back this way. Yes. I want to try to swing this over this way so you can see a little better. Yes. This is your feed pole. And it's hooked up to this lever, which rides. So this little nub rides in this trackway, which makes the feed pole go back and forth. And this is spring loaded. So here it'll grab the round and then move it forward. Then the extractor grabs it pulls it out of the belt and then it'll, the round will drop down and it'll go into the barrel. So when you, when you close this, you don't want this over here because there's no hole for no, no track for it. So you want to make sure it's pushed over that way every time before you close it. Now this booster here is a cylinder closed on the end. It's a little bit bigger than bullet diameter. And the barrel doesn't come all the way up to the end. The barrel stops right about here somewhere. When the bullet goes through and comes out the end of the barrel, it partially plugs this hole and this cylinder because there is a collar back here that rides fairly closely onto the end of the barrel. It builds up pressure here. And that pressure helps push the barrel back to make the whole gun function. They started life in 1917. I don't remember when the U.S. military stopped using them. But a bunch of the militaries, I believe the Israelis, were using them up until the 80s. 
80s or 90s. Uh, they are still used in a lot of countries around the world, you know. Now they're kind of third world country kind of thing, but they're still used a lot. It's Big Brother, which is the Maw Deuce, the M2. Is that gun used on a tank? Yes. Okay. If you look on the World War II tanks, mm. uh, the Sherman tanks, uh, they were mounted right outside the the hatch. Mm. And they also used them inside. Mm. They had a, a different version. I don't remember if they used the spade grips, but I believe it was a shorter barrel. Okay. And it was mounted in the turret of the tank. If you look at the turret of a tank where the cannon barrel is, and you look kind of down here, there's a machine gun. There's one of these barrels sticking out a little bit. Mm. What else about the 1919? They're fun as hell to shoot, except when you drop a piece of hot brass on your leg. It was one time. <laughs> one time. This is Richard with BWE Firearms, and I hope you like and enjoyed this video and learned something along the way. With this year, 2021, with me getting stage four colon cancer, diabetes, and neuropathy in my hands and feet. It's getting harder and harder to work. And I have uh, come to realize my own mortality. Uh, because of that, uh, I realized that if I don't get this information out of my head and into videos or into other people's heads, uh, I will take it to the grave with me. And that does nobody any good at all. If you would, please like, share, subscribe, and comment to the video. It helps me with the algorithms. And if you would like to support my efforts in doing these videos, uh, please go to my website, bwefirearms.com, and in my shopping cart, I have an item in there where you can donate money to my efforts. And 97% uh, uh, of the money will go directly to... Uh, me doing these videos, 3%, of course, will go to the credit card company. I will, you know, take a dollar. I will take a thousand dollars. Whatever you feel like donating, I would greatly appreciate it, and it will help me get this stuff done. You have a nice day, and we will see you in the next video.